What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Laugh to Learn podcast, your weekly source for a comedic spin on all the goings on in the world. My name is, of course, Jacob Pave, and I come to you from the Great White North on all podcast services Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And the Great White North is looking beautiful because I think it's a high of like 25 or 30 or something Celsius today. My window is open for the first time this year while recording. I'm looking at the beautiful trees and the sun outside. Uh, It is looking real nice. Um, But the world... Not so much. So uh, if it's your first time here, thank you so much. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you like what you hear. Or any one of you listening right now can also leave a review. Uh, They help a whole lot. If you could, take a screenshot of the podcast playing on your phone or your laptop or your iPod. (laughs) Shout out to the iPod. uh, Wherever you happen to be listening to it. And share that screenshot with your social media followers. This week... It's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. Last week I told you it was going to be shorter and it turned out it wasn't. This week actually will be. Um, But uh, I want to reflect really on the current situation in the Middle East and to find some lessons that we can all learn from the events unfolding. So it's going to be, I'm going to cover what's been happening quickly, uh, but I don't, I I want to get more into what's the, the Western reaction to what's been happening in the Middle East. The reaction that I've been seeing online and among family and friends, because I think there are lessons we can all learn from it. Um, As well, side note, and this is positive news, now here in Ontario, everyone 18 plus can book their vaccine. I booked mine. I posted it on uh, on, uh, Instagram yesterday. Uh, but my my vaccine first dose is June 9th. Unfortunately, the second dose isn't until September 27th, so I won't be fully vaccinated for the summer, which sucks, but um, maybe I can actually go on holidays this coming winter, so that's kind of exciting. Uh, but you guys should all be able, no matter where you are almost in the world, you should be able to book your vaccines now, so I really encourage everyone to do that so we can all stay safe and stay healthy. Um, but But to the topic of the week, we are going to be discussing the Middle East. So, you guys know where you are. This is the Laugh to Learn podcast. Hey, check it out. It's the Laugh to Learn podcast. The conflict in the Gaza Strip and in Israel in general has only escalated since we spoke about it last week. Um, To date, there have been consistent rocket fire from uh, the terrorist group, yes it's a terrorist group, Hamas, out of the Gaza Strip into civilian areas in Israel. Um, Israel, of course, has the Iron Dome their de- missile defense and rocket defense system that shoots down roughly 90 to 95 percent of rockets generally but with 3,000 rockets so far fired from Hamas into Israel it has overwhelmed their defenses and some of these rockets have gotten through uh, at the same time Israel has been sending airstrikes back over into the Gaza Strip targeting specific militant uh, headquarters and uh, militant residences. Um, Now, the real thing that I want to talk about when it comes to this is, is how complicated this issue is. So, if you want to know a full history on Israel and Palestine... You can look into it on your own. I've, I have actually this week wrote and was going to do a full history, but I really don't think that that's the sort of content people w- want from me. If it is, like I would gladly do it. I literally have the episode written, but I, I, don't, I don't think 
that it's relevant to this situation simply because uh, I'm I I want to look at how this conflict has unfolded in the West and how people are discussing it here and making up their minds on their position because I think there's a lot of flawed uh, thought processes going into this and um, of course as someone who promotes critical thinking and I think it's the number one skill anyone can have I'm actually really upset by how it appears people have been analyzing this situation how different this situation is compared to the rest of the ongoing conflict um, which is mind-blowing and ultimately how it seems like there is a right and a wrong answer right now at least in the west on your opinion on on um, the israel conflict so the current situation began roughly two weeks ago when israel decided to remove uh, a, around 500 palestinian families from their homes in jerusalem now this is a part of Jerusalem that is controlled by Israel, not Palestine. Most of Jerusalem is controlled by Israel. Um, And it's widely regarded to be a form of ethnic cleansing to have asked them to leave their homes. Uh, They tried this once before and it ended up there was fighting back and then they took their homes back. The Palestinian families did. And now those same families were told to leave their homes and forced out of their homes. So, this started with Israel doing that, which was absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. And I don't think there's an active way to defend that, that, that position, to, to defend what they did. It was wrong to ask them to leave. Now, legally, by looking into it, they're saying that they were asking them to leave for sort, sort of like urban development, which is legal, right? Even here in Canada, the government can come and buy out your home and you have to leave. You can't say no. Like if they want to build a highway or a a park, if they want to tear it down and build a forest, just plant a forest, you know what I mean? You can't say no. Um, It's, it's consider it's um, it becomes considered crown land. Basically the queen can come and take your property. Um, it's not often done. It's usually nowadays only done for highways, like major highways, uh, and it costs the government a lot of money to buy the property. But that's the excuse that the Israeli government is using. I don't buy it. I, I completely agree that it's ethnic cleansing, and like I said, I don't think that you can defend this. I don't think there's a defense for that. However, the following day... What ended up happening was at the Alaska Mosque, which mosque, which is the most famous temple uh, in the world in the Muslim faith, um, it was basically you had Hamas militants, and they were Hamas militants. There's no question about that, and <laughs> no one's denying it. Even Hamas isn't denying it. Um, essentially provoking Israeli police outside of the mosque and israeli police are always there they that's what they do (laughs) they literally protect the area uh, because suicide bombers attempt to attack the mosque all the time historically in recent times though it's they've been getting much better at um at securing the area and it really doesn't happen at all anymore but these militants were in the area. They were provoking the police. When the police moved in to make arrests on them, uh, and they were like throwing rocks, breaking property, stuff like that. When police moved in to make arrests on them, they ran into the mosque. That's why the Israeli police entered the Alaska mosque. And you've seen, I'm sure, horrendous footage of you know uh, flashbang grenades being thrown in the mosque and like rocks being thrown back and forth and rubber bullets being shot through the mosque ultimately that was hamas that that caused that to happen and just like anywhere else in the world if a a a group is throwing rocks and bricks and breaking windows and stuff and and throwing those items at police and then run into a building even if it's a church 
or a mosque or a temple or a goudoir or any other religious building, the police are going to go in <laughs> to protect the other people in there because they have no idea what this group is doing. And that's what happened. So I am actually 100% on the side of the Israeli police force when it comes to entering the mosque. And again, I don't think you can defend what Hamas was doing. And it's all on video. It's 100% on video. I've seen people saying that, you know, the police weren't provoked and they did this, uh, it's all fake and whatever. It's literally not. It's 100% of what's happened thus far is on video. So I, I just don't understand how anyone can defend Israel when it comes to, you know, ethnically cleansing and kicking the Muslim families, the Palestinian, they were all Muslims, but the Palestinian families out of their homes. And I also don't understand how you can defend the position of Hamas when it comes to attacking police outside of the mosque. Because the police are there all the time. That's where they are 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They actively defend the mosque. That's what they do. They, they protect it. So... <laughs> Moving forward from that, there's all these protests now around the mosque. That's when you started seeing the the video of violence in the streets began. That evening, Hamas launched 160 rockets into civilian areas in Israel. Now, that is an act of war. These are unguided rocket attacks into Israel. And again... I don't know how anyone can defend that. And this is this is the point where I come to the West's response. Because online, everyone, every single person I know is pro-Palestine. And I don't understand how you can expect any government, any country, even if they're Jewish and you don't like them because they're Jewish, okay? Because that's how it looks just being perfectly honest with you it's like people think that because the palestinians are a minority they must be right i disagree because i think that we need to separate palestine israel and hamas hamas is not palestine but hamas lives within palestine and they use the palestinian people as shields watch the videos you can see them launching rockets from within courtyards of an apartment complex. Why do you think they do that? Because it's quite clear to me that they're doing that because they know that Israel will not send an airstrike at a full apartment complex and kill, you know, four or five hundred people. And they haven't done that. They could. If it was the United States and Mexico was attacking them, I guarantee you the United States would hit them. And if they did, no one would really say anything. They'd be like, it sucks for those four or 500 people, but Mexico shouldn't have launched rockets from an apartment complex. Hamas does it, and people say, wow, look, they're defending themselves against the big, bad Israel. Israel is not big and bad. They're, they're not even a superpower in that part of the world. In that part of the world, you have Iran, China, and Russia. You have North and South Korea over there, right? <laughs> and then you have Israel. Israel's comparable with, like, Egypt. You know what I mean? They're certainly more sophisticated than Libya and Jordan. They're, they're, they're definitely one of the more sophisticated militaries, but they're not a superpower. They don't have nuclear weapons, right? <laughs> Whereas uh, Iran's working on one, China has them, Russia has them. They're not a superpower in the East. They're just not. And it's mind-blowing to me that... Everyone just kind of decided, in my opinion, because of how Muslims are viewed here in the West as a minority that needs to be protected, which in and of itself is something that I don't necessarily agree with, just because I don't think any religion needs to be protected. If a religion needs to be protected, it's probably a bad idea. And to be perfectly honest with you, they're all probably bad ideas that shouldn't be protected. Everyone should be able to practice their faith and believe what they want. Absolutely. However, the people that practice a religion shouldn't be protected just because they practice that religion. It shouldn't be like, well, this individual or, or this group of individuals is Muslim, therefore we have to protect them as a group. 
Because, like, one of them could be a serial killer. And then what are we supposed to do? Like, oh, but he's also a Muslim, so it's okay. No. Or he's also a Christian. It's okay. No. Like, you know how many fucked up Christians there are that we've gladly taken out over time? Lots of them. And that's what Hamas is. Hamas is an extremist group that is launching rockets from literally behind children. (laughs) Quite literally, they're hiding behind women and children who are non-fighters and launching these rocket attacks knowing that Israel won't hit them back. And they're launching these rockets openly into civilian areas. In the first three days of fighting, 200 Hamas rockets landed inside Gaza and killed two families, destroying eight homes. They're literally attacking their own people because of how unsophisticated their technology is. And they don't care. They don't give a fuck. They have long-range rockets. They don't have to be launching short-range and potentially killing their own people, but they are anyways. They're taking the risk because they don't care. They're literally a terrorist organization. And I feel bad for the individuals of Palestine who are separate from Hamas. Like, there's a a major Christian, not a major, but there's a significant Christian population there. There's also um, a very minor Jewish population, although they seem to be being kicked out of Gaza. Uh, But nonetheless, they are there. And these groups are kind of all put together, and people see rocket attacks from Gaza, and they go, wow, the people of Palestine are standing up for themselves. No, they're not. A terrorist organization is taking advantage of the political climate right now to attempt to raise a coup against the Israeli government. And the fact that you guys can't see that, the fact that you don't understand that that's, and I'm telling you right now, you don't understand that that's happening. There are certainly people who support Hamas that know everything that's going on. I would be really surprised if that group of people outside of of the extremist countries in the Middle East, I would be surprised if that's more than 10% of the population who understand the whole situation and continue to support the rocket attacks against Israel. And Israel has come out and said that they are responding with these airstrikes because of the rocket attacks. They are targeting militant groups. Yes, there is collateral damage. Yes, there are families dying. And it's absolutely horrible. But if it were any other country, literally any other country, no one, except maybe China. China, yeah, maybe China. No one would question anything. If this were Russia attacking against, you know, if the Ukraine started launching rockets into Russia and Russia came back and killed 4,000 people with a tactical nuke, everyone would be like, oh, fuck, shouldn't have launched rockets at Russia. (laughs) Right? If it was the U.S., as I already mentioned, between the U.S. and Mexico or the U.S. and Canada and the U.S. returned with a tactical nuke, well, no one would would question it. It'd be like, yeah, shouldn't have done that. But because it's Israel, people are like, oof, they're in the wrong. They don't, like the, the, the saying that Israel, I believe Israel has a right to defend themselves. I'm not even saying that, because that's fucking stupid. If you have to say a country has the right to defend itself, you don't understand anything about anything. Anything about anything. It's absolutely a ridiculous sentiment that people are saying, oh, I believe Israel has a right to defend itself. Of course they do. The fact that you have to say that means that you're discussing with morons. If you think that Israel doesn't have a right to defend itself, you're a moron. Because multiple things can be true. We can walk and chew gum at the same time, right? Israel should not have attempted to kick out all of those Palestinian families in Jerusalem. They should not have done that. Even if it's legal under their constitution, they should not have done that. We can say morally that was wrong. However, we also have to be able to say that Hamas definitely shouldn't have launched rockets against the civilian population in Israel. What, because of the Iron Dome? Because they can defend themselves? We justify it? Well, that's like saying Russia can launch a nuke at the United States because they'll probably shoot it down. They would shoot it down, right? Statistically speaking. So why doesn't Russia just launch nukes at, at, at the U.S. Or, or, or the U.S. launch nukes at China? Because, oh, they'll shoot it down. That makes it okay? No. 
Hamas is fucked by their decision, and they escalated the violence to a point of no return. They are the ones who attempted to kill civilians. They're in the wrong. They're the ones who started it off. Now, at this point, could Israel sign a ceasefire with them? Absolutely, because Hamas is definitely running low on supplies, right? They've launched to date 3,000 rockets into Israel is the estimate. 3,000 rockets is a lot. And we also know that Israel's hit a few of their storage locations, so they have to be running low. Original estimates were like that Hamas had roughly 2,000 rockets, so we know they've already launched more than what the experts thought they had. They can't keep this up indefinitely. Israel absolutely can. Because they can get shipments of them <laughs> if they start running low, right? Canada is still supplying them with weapons. The U.S. is still supplying them with weapons. But you can't get weapons into Palestine because you have to go through Israel. So their allies can't, like Iran, can't get rockets into Palestine so that Hamas can fire them out back into Israel. It's, just, it's not going to happen. They are going to run out of supplies. And I feel like Israel is kind of just waiting for that to happen. They're like, well, we're already here. Let's make them fire all that they have. And then, you know, I am worried that they're going to go in on the ground. But we, like I said, we have to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. We have to be able to say that Israel should not have tried to kick out that group of people. And we also have to be able to say that Hamas should not have responded by attempting rocket fire on a civilian population. As I mentioned already, including 200 rockets on their own people in Gaza. And then we also have to be able to say that Israel, it, by, by returning airstrikes on those tactical positions, they have to be allowed to do that. We have to be able to say that. You can't just expect anyone to accept rocket fire into a civilian populated area. You just cannot accept that. And if you can, you seriously, seriously need to consider why you think that's true. And if it's simply because the Palestinians are a minority, well, then you need to learn to separate Hamas from Palestine because these are two separate things. You have to separate the two. And you have to be able to say that the Palestinian people deserve the right to live in Jerusalem. They obviously do. They were living there. They've been living there for years. Those were their homes that they were kicking them out of. They deserve the right to stay in their homes. Just as, as they have the right to vote in Israel's elections, which they do. You know who canceled their elections this year? Palestine. <laughs> they canceled their elections again, third time in a row. So this is now like nine or ten years that the same person's been in power because they keep canceling elections. I say it all the time. Whenever you see a dictator, you will find someone hungry for power and ruthless and afraid. Afraid of losing that power because all the stats showed that the current party was about to lose their power in Palestine, so they canceled the elections again. It's not okay. You have to support, we have to support democracy. That has to be the number one goal for the Palestinian people. They have to have democratically elected governments. And we have to free them of Hamas. That is the only way going forward to bring justice and peace to that area is freedom from Hamas. And that's a difficult, difficult process. But when it comes to the West, what I want to say is people have to really educate themselves because a lot of people that know nothing about the Middle East have been posting a whole lot about Israel. And I, and I know that they know nothing about the Middle East because I talk to these people all the time and they know nothing about politics at all. They just saw this was going on, watched a few videos, probably from the Young Turks or something, and then they posted what they think. And... You just have to be so careful. There's a reason that I haven't posted about this. Because any post online is short, it's contained to that one post, and it's very easy to misconstrue language. And this is a really complicated issue. As, I'm, as I keep reiterating, both sides are in the wrong here. 
in multiple ways. But when you compare the actions of one or another, one is launching rockets randomly unguided into civilian areas. One is conducting modern targeted military strikes. And yeah, Israel's more effective and has killed a lot more people. But when you see the number of people dead, I understand when you, whenever you see like women and children are dead, it's, it's absolutely horrible, but it is war. <laughs> it just is. There's going to be collateral damage. And Israel is just a more sophisticated group. The IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, is a more sophisticated military than the terrorist group Hamas they're fighting against. <laughs> So, yeah, when you see a whole bunch of people dead, we don't know how many of them are actually Hamas militants. And it might be a lot of them. <laughs> so you just have to be so careful. And you really have to understand what's going on before you jump into situations. This isn't something simple like what we see here, right? Like people either hated or loved Donald Trump and they really needed to know very little about politics. They could watch a few videos on him and be like, I like this guy or I hate this guy. And th that's the way Western politics works. Middle Eastern politics and, and, and this situation has been going on for so, like literally hundreds of years, if not almost a thousand, right? Like this goes so far back it's unbelievable the state of israel itself is a reaction to the nazi death camps which was a reaction what like people the 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 jews living in uh central europe and germany were a reaction to the russian pogroms before that because they were kicked out of Russia where they had moved into. And then they went to Germany. And then when they were kicked out of Germany, they split. Some came to the U.S. Uh, specifically in, in large groups. And others went back to Israel and formed a nation there. And there's this huge cycle that people really need to educate themselves on. They really, really do. Because there's so much ignorance. So much just people who really don't understand the situation and aren't prepared to defend their positions instead getting mad when they hear a position like mine and even though they and 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 if you hear what i'm saying and it upsets you i would go so far as to say that that's a good thing because what i'm telling you like my position on this i'm not religious remotely so there is no no skew one way or another when it comes to that and i'm i i am extremely well educated on the history of the region and because of that i feel like i can come to this informed opinion that both sides are wrong and one side has done worse and that side happens to be hamas not the people of palestine so everyone preaching i'm gonna say for support for palestine or whatever i agree with you but be careful what you post because you don't want to be conflating the two and that being palestine and hamas and a lot of people are doing that a lot of people are saying it's good the palestinian people are defending themselves no they're not no they're not the extremist terror organization hamas is capitalizing on the current political situation. And the people of Palestine are suffering because of it, as well as the people of Israel suffering because of it. We need to separate the terror organization Hamas from the people of Palestine. And people really need to be careful when they're posting online. They really need to educate themselves better on situation like this before talking about it and i think i i really think that anytime you see violence in the world you need to be careful not to just assume that the minority group is in the right is justified because that's the sentiment in the united states and it's typically been correct it just, it has been here, but it's a very different society. And you have to be very careful 
not to conflate your Western values with a situation going on in a non-Western part of the world. This is like landing on Mars and assuming you can breathe air. You, you need to learn the history of the area. You need to learn the practices that have been going on. You need to understand the civil discourse before you can form an opinion. Like, Hamas launches rockets at Israel all the time, constantly, year-round, 365 days a year, there is a threat of Hamas launching rockets at Israel, and Israel never fires back. The only reason, any, and they're launching rockets openly into civilian areas, killing people all the time. The Iron Dome, like I said, catches roughly 90 to 95% of the rockets, is the estimate. But 5% get through, and a few of those kill families once or twice every year. It just, boom, dead. No one talks about it. And now that Israel chooses to defend themselves, people get upset. So just because something happens all the time, therefore it doesn't get reported on, like mass shootings in the United States, doesn't make it okay, right? Mass shootings now happen like, well, not under COVID, but before COVID. It was like 21 or 22 a week, mass shootings in the United States, with three or more people injured or dead, okay? No one reports on them other than local news because of how often it happens. It's the same thing with strikes from Hamas into Israel. It happens all the time. People die all the time that it's just not reported on because it's not interesting. So what does get reported on in the U.S. is when a mass shooting starts and then someone in the crowd fires back and kills the mass shooter. That gets reported on all the time. We see those stories all the time because it's exciting. It's good news. Well, now you're seeing Israel who have who are the victims of these rocket attacks all the time, just like the victims of mass shootings, never getting reported on. Finally, they return fire, and it's being reported on. And you have to understand that. You have to understand what's been going on here for decades, centuries, and millennia. That's the only way you can come to a proper conclusion on what's happening. And I would invite someone who is pro-Palestine to have a discussion with me on this. And I mean educated pro-Palestine. Even uneducated, I don't care. I'll talk to you about it. But be careful, because I'll point, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But I would, I would have that conversation with someone, because I think it could be a really interesting thing to discuss. Uh, a civil conversation uh, defending both sides. Uh, but like I said... In conclusion, both sides screwed up here. Israel started this by removing families they shouldn't have removed and ethnically cleansing a section of Jerusalem. Hamas incited the violence by attacking police officers outside of the Alaska Mos mosque. I can't, pr I can't pronounce that, and it really bothers me because I, I worked on that for like a day, literally reading it over and over again one day. Uh, and I got good at it, and now I can't pronounce it at all. Uh, but outside of the mosque, they were uh, starting violence, and then by returning with, or by coming back with rocket fire after that violence at the mosque, that escalated the violence to where it is, and they are to blame for that. Hamas is to blame for that. They're to blame for the current situation, and I really can't fault Israel for wanting to see it through to the end now, and get rid of as much of the weapon storage and militant structure of Hamas as possible. Thank you all so, so much for listening. I really encourage you, as always, to take these discussions with your friends, family, and your lovers and haters, as well, also with me, over on social media. You can find my links in the description for this podcast. Please share the podcast with your friends and family. Subscribe on your favorite app. It is, of course, the Laugh to Learn podcast on all services, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Until next time, friends, keep on laughing, keep washing those hands, keep social distancing, and keep on learning. Oh, and keep booking your vaccines.